Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, time to start on the EL34 build with the 5751 driver tube. Starting with the chassis, basically got 90% of the fab work done on the top for the power transform of the choke and all the tube socket holes. We still got to put the holes for the output transformers, which I'm not sure which ones we're going to put on this one yet. This may be the amp that gets the ISO tangos, but whatever output transformers you do, that can be done later. And it's almost nice just to not have them in your way while you're working on this other stuff, but hey, we'll, we'll decide that later. The other thing we have done too is the part that I used to hate the most, which is the IEC socket. I finally figured out how to do these, and I know some of y'all are going to go, well, duh, but read this on a forum. Thank God for the internet. Cool to learn stuff or techniques from other people. This guy said what he does is he lays out the square. Don't try to cut that little pit roof thing on the top. Just make it a square hole. But you can't see that anyway. And yeah, it may look cooler when you're assembling it, that you've got it shaped just right. When it's in place you can't even see it and it doesn't matter so don't bother with that just make a square hole and lay it out just inside of what you you know measure it's going to be drill a hole in each corner and drill it with a drill bit about that big like a 1 8 inch drill bit i think that's about what that is you know you don't want a little tiny hole but you don't need a really big one either so mark each corner, all four of them, with a drill bit. And then come back with a Dremel tool with one of these little cutoff blades. And these little thin ones do exactly that. They break like that just endlessly. So go ahead and spend the money and get some of those reinforced ones. Yeah, they cut a wider curve for you know, the grooves a little wider. But they also last a lot longer. They don't just instantly snap like these want to do. And... Obviously, wear safety glasses while you're doing any of this fab work because you get a piece of metal in your eye, and it's happened to me. It is brutally painful, and I've had to have a surgeon come in with a little tiny electric drill and drill a hole in my eyeball to get the piece of metal to come out, and you don't want somebody having to drill holes in your eyeball. And that's what's going to happen if you get one of these little pieces of metal or something. I mean, something like this could be even worse. And thank God that it's never hit like in my central vision. One of the little things that I had drilled was off in my peripheral vision in this eye. And I can still, there's a little kind of blurry thing down here. If that had been in my central vision, so you don't want that to happen. Once you drill the four holes, you just come in with a Dremel tool and slot, 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 slot. That little piece pops out. And then I just get a, you know, half round bastard file and then file it out until it drops in. And man, it's so much easier than all these other crazy ways that I used to do it. And you just got to be really careful and hold the Dremel tool really tight and like use your thumb or some other part of your hand to kind of keep it in place so it can't like jump and go across because it'll try to hop out of that slot and just run across the chassis and ruin the powder coat. And especially when you're working on this stuff that's pre-powder coated, I mean, it's just like drilling holes. If you don't put a nice, pretty deep center punch, start off with a small hole and then go to bigger, the drill bit will walk across the surface and just ruin the powder coat. And there's no way to match this stuff. You can touch it up with some, you know, flat black touch-up paint, but you'll always see it. Because you know where it is. You'll see it. So anyway, we've already got, like, all this drilled out. And I am going to be uploading these measurements in a CAD file at some point. I'm going to have to put together a CAD drawing to potentially get these things fabbed up by somebody else. Even if I don't get the CAD done up, I'm going to be drawing up at least like where the center lines of all these holes are. 
and like the transformer holes so that you can measure this stuff out. And I think I've shown you before, if you're going to be doing this kind of fab work yourself, do yourself a favor and get a couple of these. This is a really cool one. I'll put a link in the description. This is on Amazon. It's got a little scribe thing here. It's got a little roller. It's in metric and in American or inches. I've been using metric most of the time. Even though I'm in the U.S., everybody wants to use inches. Metric's so much easier to deal with, and I'm sure you folks overseas know that. That's another reason to do it metric is we're the only stupid country in the world that uses inches. I have no idea why we can't give that up. That's, that's the dumbest measuring system ever designed. Anyway, this works really great for you just want to make sure that this is level to the surface and then you can just go like this and mark, 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 mark the little slots and, and then come in in the other direction. Vernier caliper, don't buy one with a dial on it. You don't need that kind of accuracy. You don't need that big lumpy dial getting in your way. Digital ones are useless too, to me got a battery you have to deal with and nobody's measuring anything that accurately we're just measuring you know plus or minus a tenth of a millimeter most times is fine the only time you have to really get critical is doing these little small holes for the tube socket and the tube ring and getting those centered this is a central tool company made in japan probably about 30 years old you find these on ebay for less than what you're going to pay for some garbage china one on amazon like this one seems to be pretty high quality i haven't found this type on amazon that are even decent so look on ebay and just get like a starrett or like the central tool company is another one that's really good get one of these older made in japan ones and they're the bomb and it'll last a lifetime so these two you, you almost can't live without the other thing is to get a really good automatic center punch that's just mind-blowingly helpful and with those tools and one of these prefab chassis with the pre-powder coated man it just makes life so much easier and then you don't have to deal with getting this stuff powder coated now these are steel some people say that steel transmits the magnetic flux stuff and causes problems i've built a ton of amps using steel chassis and they're silent i haven't heard a peep out of them and so i'm not a believer that you got to build these things out of aluminum the problem with those hammond chassis that are made out of aluminum is the aluminum is pretty thin they weren't designed for putting two power transformers and output transformers and all this heavy iron even these steel ones tend to sag a little bit with all that heavy iron on them you put it on an aluminum one and it's going to be all brr, folded up weird you're not going to be happy with it it works fine for like those little phono preamps but you know or some smaller projects like that but for an amplifier get one of these so anyway let's get working on the power supply Okay, so first thing we're going to be doing is mounting the IEC socket. And I'd already started on assembling this amp, so I'm going to show you how this bolts down. Let me zoom in here and show you what this looks like in detail. Okay, the key things here are we use the short 440 screws with these K nuts or Keeps nuts have these star washers built into them so you have one short 440 screw here and then you have one short one over here and those attach this to the chassis then we have this lug here solder lug you want to come in here with a screwdriver or something and or your dremel tool and scrape off all the powder coating stuff's pretty tough so you might need a dribble tool you need to make sure you get this down to the bare metal and you put the long 440 screw and one keeps nut and tighten it up real tight you know don't get stupid and just twist the screw off but you want to get it really good and tight 
then you put the solder lug down, then you put the second nut on top of this one and tighten this down. Now this solder lug is going to try to spin when you're tightening up this nut and so it kind of helps to preload it like start it up here on the top with the lug and then as you tighten the nut down the lug and the nut will kind of spin together until it's in this position like this with it facing down and then you get this one little piece of 18 gauge solid core green wire greens used for ground wires and you solder it here solder it to the lug and then you have a really solid chassis connection for the safety ground to the chassis as close to this IEC connector as possible and the other key thing is this is not where the signal ground connects this is the safety ground they're connected to the chassis in separate places so next thing we're going to do we're going to install our grommets so you're going to get two different grommets with the kit you can have a small one here that goes to the choke and then you have two of the larger ones that go in here so let's do the large ones here first let me zoom in here okay so what we're going to do is you go like this with the edge and get it started like that and then push it up with your finger and then you might have to get your fingernail or something like that and flip that in like that so we're going to go ahead and install all three grommets so we can then get ready to work on the iron and get it ready to install these grommets are required when you have wire coming through a hole in a chassis because if you don't it could eventually vibrate and cut through the insulation and then you'd end up with a short circuit blow fuses or other kind of bad stuff it might even short out the transformer so next I'm going to show you how to prep the transformer for installation because we're going to trim off the wires that we are not going to be using so let me show you doing that procedure so first thing you want to do is you gotta remove all these screws and note that there's a fiber washer on this side in my amps I paint these with some Krylon dark bronze hammer finish paint but you can obviously paint them whatever color you would like you could put bigger grommets and just pull all these wires inside the amp and then like heat shrink off the ones you're not going to use but I don't see any reason on pulling wires inside the amp that we're not going to be using and obviously while these end bells are off this is a perfect time for you to go paint them you just get like some 220 grit sandpaper and scuff them off make sure you get the shiny off because the paint will not stick to this shiny powder coat and I've seen people say oh you got to replace the end bells and get some raw finished ones you don't need to do that and you don't have to get all this powder coat off that Krylon paint will stick good to this powder coat as long as you scuff the shiny glossiness off of it so do all the edges and everything and get the shiny off and then you can spray paint them and do them whatever color you want or if you want to leave them the black powder coat this is some very durable finish and if you're okay with black then just leave them alone obviously so in this amp we're going to be using all of the wires on this side these two yellow ones are the rectifier tube heaters we're going to be using the center tap because we're going to be grounding it for the other heaters and then these two green wires go to the heaters for the output tube and the input tube and we're going to be using most of the wires on this side we've got these three red wires these are the high voltage that's the center tap and then here are the two wires that are going to go to the rectifier tube and then the only wire we're not going to be using we're going to be wiring this up with the white wire 
and the black wire. Now if you're buying the 373BX, like if you live in a country that has 220 or some other voltage besides 120, you're going to have to buy the 300 series one and it's going to have a bunch of different primary wires and again you can just pull through the ones that you're going to be using inside the chassis and then the ones you're not using you can do what I'm fixing to do with this gray wire here which is the 115 volt primary tap we're not going to be using it so you simply get some little snippers like that clip it off and then get a little piece of heat shrink tubing like this and you don't need a lot maybe about that much but you do want to make sure it's not just a sliver of heat shrink tubing too and you want it to come past the end of the wire let me zoom in here so you can get a little better shot of that get it like that and then you could use a heat gun i just use the edge of the soldering iron like that and then do that part first then i just quickly like kind of go like that with my fingers to kind of seal it up and then go like this make sure it's good and shrunk up where it's not going to slide off and then that unused wire is insulated and then just you know gather those wires up like that I usually try to tuck this one underneath one of them like that so it kind of stays in place and then you put your you know original finished or painted in bells back on and then I always put the screw head towards the inboard side of the amp which is going to be the heaters these are going to go towards the edge and so you put the screws back in with the washer from that direction like that and then you put the nuts on and then you're done so I've got some that I've already painted that we're going to be using for this build so let's get to installing those onto the chassis okay so we got our transformer all prepped up and this is what it looks like all painted and everything I've got to clean off a little bit of this goop here this goop that's on the top was the adhesive for the little sticker that Hammond puts on the top of these and obviously it would look horrible to have this on top of the transformer and so I install it on the bottom I peel it off and then get a little contact cement or something to make sure it's attached well to the bottom and the reason for this is so that in the future if this transformer goes bad or you know somebody else acquires the amp in the future they'll know what the power transformer is and the voltages that it's supposed to be in case it has to be replaced and you can clean this goop off with you know I'm just using a little bit of Kroger isopropyl alcohol and there we go all nice and clean and on the screws if you really want to get fancy I used some little black acorn nuts and some two inch long 832 screws obviously if you have the other 373 transformers i think they have a thicker core you'll need to measure for the hardware that you're going to use you can paint what it came with or just leave it silver if that's what you think looks better so anyway next step is going to be got a little chassis prep here this right here is going to be our star ground point and so we want to make sure that we don't have any paint where the tag strip is going to be grounded to the chassis so get a little Dremel tool this is I mean I hate to say you need to have one of these to do this build but you probably do so let's get the powder coat removed here and there we go just like that get it all cleaned off so there's no paint where we're going to be bolting down the star ground point tag strip and I would go with 832 to hold these, you know, to hold the hardware down. That's what the kit's going to come with. That's what these holes will be drilled for. But in this kind of prototype one, I'm using up these 1032 screws that I have. And even with the 832 screws, you'll probably find out that the screw won't go through the tag strip. 
And so you're going to have to open up this hole a little bit with a Dremel tool. And I use this little pointy tip one like this. And you just come in and... And obviously with these 1032 screws, you've got to remove more material. The 832, I think they just barely won't fit. You could use a little round file or something like that. If you got like a chainsaw sharpening file, something like that, it would work fine too. But now we got that bolt where it comes through like that. The next thing we need to do is you turn the amp up. It's probably going to be kind of hard to show you this on camera. But when I pull them through, you'll be able to see. You want to you have it like that when you have the three green wires like this on this side and the yellow ones over there like that so that everything's bundled together that goes together. And we're going to do the same thing on the power supply side. And you get them started through and then you just kind of pull on the wires like this until... You've got all of the wire inside the amp, and you have the transformer flush up against the chassis like that. And you don't want to pull on it super hard where you know you pull the wires loose from the you know connections inside the transformer. So don't get like super rough with it. And then all you do is I would start with these two outboard screws. Put one of those in, get one of the keeps nuts, get it started like that. There's going to be one of these larger button head screws that are longer than the other ones. It goes in that location right here, like that, because we're going to be using the clamp for the Soline cap on that mounting screw, and then these two up against the, these two outboard ones don't have anything on them. They just bolt down. So we'll put this one in the corner in next. It's a little hard to get started because of the IC sockets in the way. You might have better luck just holding the nut down with your finger like that, or the side of your finger, and then starting the nut, or starting the screw through the hole. Like I said, this one in the corner is a little difficult to get started. But you definitely want to install the IEC socket like the first thing. Don't, don't bolt the transformer down and then try to install this. At least, at least I found it easier not to. Well, I didn't get as much done as I wanted to in this segment, but I kind of blabbered on a little bit at the start about the tools and fab work and stuff that if you're building this kit, you're not going to be doing anyway. And this was supposed to be about, hey, you know, in the future, if I start selling kits, this is how you would assemble one, or if you want to DIY it yourself. So I know there's going to be both types of people watching this video, so I wanted to cover a little bit of that. Next segment, I hope to finish up the power supply, get it all wired up, and then also get the heater wires run to the power tubes and the driver tubes. First thing you want to do is get all the heater wiring run because it's sitting up next to the chassis underneath all this other wiring. So that's going to be the goal of the next video. Got the finished amp here so you can kind of see what it's going to look like and how all the tubes are all laid out. So kind of, that kind of makes sense. And then, yeah, hopefully we can get that part knocked out and then get to work on the fun part to me, which is wiring up all of the other high voltage wiring we're probably going to power it up after the next video. I'm going to do it on a Variac and then see what the voltages look like without the load of the output tubes and see if it's going to be okay for you guys to power it up without a Variac to like test it. But got to be careful. Some amps will super overvolt the capacitors if you power it up without the load of the power tubes. And blow the capacitors up. We are using fairly high voltage rated capacitors in this design mainly for that reason in case somebody decides hey I'm gonna 
power this thing up with the output tubes not in it just to look at it or I don't people do dumb things so got to kind of build stuff that I'm selling to the public design for worst case scenarios but we'll find that out in the next video hope you're enjoying the series if you are please subscribe to the channel please like the video thanks to all you patreon supporters and viewers that watch my channel and people that otherwise support what I'm doing really appreciate it and until next time have a nice day